we're firing crossbows and slaying necromancers. That's right, it's Darkest Dungeon from Mythic Games. In Darkest Dungeon, players take on the role of brave adventurers, plunging into the depths of twisted dungeons, hoping to vanquish the monsters within. The campaign game unfolds over four acts, with adventurers fighting monsters in mazes, visiting hamlets to rest and buy gear, and defeating mighty bosses. If they can survive all 11 episodes, the party wins the game. Set up for the first game begins with the selection of a boss card. This is the first main antagonist of the campaign, and they have three levels of threat. Until the boss is confronted, their passive abilities will affect the game in both the dungeon and the hamlet. Set the boss card nearby. Next, each player chooses a hero, taking the matching hero board, and selects three level one skills from the hero's skills card deck, placing them on their slots. Hero boards include a hero level, start on the level one side, hero name, dodge, life total, Hero Movement, Resistances and Immunities, A Town Ability, A Death's Door Die Slot, A Stress Track, Skill Slots ranging from levels 1 to 3, and Placement Slots for Trinkets, Diseases, and Quirks. Each player also takes a Stress Meter token and places it white side up on the zero space of their Stress Track. Finally, of the remaining unchosen heroes, select two to remain on the side area known as the stagecoach. They'll be in the hamlet waiting to replace a party member if someone should perish in the dungeon. If all heroes die in the campaign, or if less than four heroes remain at the beginning of an episode, the game is lost. However, Darkest Dungeon can always be restarted with players taking lessons from their failed campaigns. Once heroes have been selected, take out the stance trackers. Place the matching hero cards on the hero stance track. Stances include aggressive, defensive, range, and support. Create a supply of separately shuffled decks, including afflictions, virtues, diseases, quirks, negative and positive, curios and trinkets, room cards, monster cards, town event cards, and create a supply of tokens separated by type. Set the light tracker on five. Next, shuffle the quest deck and draw two level one quests. Quest cards have an objective and XP reward, allowing heroes to level up between dungeon runs. Select one quest to play for this game and discard the other. Follow the instructions on the quest and gather the room tiles indicated. Set up the dungeon layout by drawing a random dungeon board map and placing the room tiles according to the quest randomly face down in the room slots. Place the party figure on the start location. Next, roll for provisions. Each player rolls two provision dice. If they roll a wild symbol, they may turn that dice to any side. Then all dice are set aside in a common pool. They can be used for their face-up ability during the game, which includes bandages for healing, food for hunger, and even tools to counter exploration hazards. Gameplay occurs in shared turns. First, the party navigates through the corridors of the dungeon, exploring rooms in an effort to complete their quest. There are three steps the players can take. Scout, which is optional, explore, and enter a room. First, if the group all agrees, the party scouts ahead and reveals the rooms adjacent to their current room. Note that the dots along the corridors represent long hallways and are considered the adjacent spaces when next to rooms. When scouting, each hero suffers one stress, lowering their stress token on their track. Next, in exploration, the group discusses tactics and strats, then plans a path forward. They may change stances and consume any provisions during this step as well. Stance will determine turn order during exploration, with the aggressive player going first. Once a path is chosen, each player rolls two exploration dice, or just one if they scouted, and in turn order resolves their rolls. Some results include rubble, which blocks the path, requiring the player to spend a tools provision or suffer one damage per hero level and one stress. 
Stressful Darkness, which requires the player to spin one torch provision, or reduce the light by one, or suffer two stress. Or even Curio, which allows a player to draw a Curio card, which provides both a positive and negative effect. Players may spend a torch provision before drawing the card to ignore any negative effects. And more. When exploring, if players move back along an already explored path, they suffer one stress. Because they're backtracking and it's already dark in the dungeon, so it's kind of crazy. Finally, once the exploration results are resolved, players enter the room. Depending on the type of room, different things might occur. Some rooms are empty and immediately cleared from the board. Some rooms have traps, where players suffer a combination of stress and damage equal to the dungeon's level. Traps also stay in place and cannot be cleared. Other rooms are dark, which reduce the light by one and also cannot be cleared. The lair room is full of monsters and initiates a battle. More on that in a sec. Other rooms include curios, treasure, and most importantly, objectives, which trigger the gameplay steps of the quest card. Like treasure rooms and layers, these rooms are always guarded by monsters, initiating battle upon entrance. Before we explain battle, some quick room concepts. Some quests provide campfire supplies, which when expended, allow players to rest once a room has been cleared. The quest's rest points can then be distributed amongst the players to recover life and or stress. Gold will be found while questing. It's a shared resource that goes into a pool near the provisions. This will be spent in the hamlet after the dungeon is complete. Okay, let's talk battle. Reveal a room card and place its matching room tile in the center of the table. Some rooms have special effects. Be sure to read those aloud. Then place the hero models on the space matching their stance. Begin drawing monsters from the monster deck, placing them on the monster stance tracker either to the front if they're aggressive or the back if they're support, until all four slots are filled. Then place their figures on the board. Some large monsters occupy multiple stances and thus reduce the number of monsters in battle as well. Finally, place the round tracker on round one and place a loot chest token face down in any areas that have an exclamation point. The battle is now ready to begin. Battle turns are resolved by revealing an initiative card, which has either hero or monsters on the face up side. The leftmost character on that side who has not been activated yet takes their turn. Let's look at hero turns. On a hero turn, they may perform two actions, which can be any of the following. Move, which allows a hero to move as many areas up to their speed as they would like. Interact, which allows players to pick up loot and interact with quest items. Change stance, which moves a hero up or down one space on the stance track, swapping places with their neighbor. And use a skill. Skills have a level, name, eligible stances, a crit value, an accuracy stat, range and number of targets, and effects. When using a skill, the hero must be in the correct stance, be within range, which is the number of spaces away they can hit, and indicate the target. They then roll a 10-sided die. If the result is less than their accuracy rating, minus the dodge value of a hostile target, they hit, applying the skill's power to the target, either wounds or other game effects. Additionally, if the roll is less than the crit value, the hit crits, scoring additional wounds or effects. Some skills can apply conditions as well, including bleeding, buffs, and blight. Check the rules for those specifics. On monster turns, resolve their actions in the following order. First, based on the stance it currently resides on, select the ability marked with a number. In the case of monsters with multiple skills, roll a d10 to determine which is used. Next, select the target. If more than one target is in range, prioritize them by stance. If no targets are in range, the monster moves its move speed to get into range. If they still have no targets, they skip the rest of their turn. Finally, take the action by following the same steps as a hero skill use. 
Once all monsters and heroes have taken their turn, the battle round is over and the tracker moves up one space. If at the end of four rounds the room is not cleared of monsters, the party must exit the room without removing the tile from the map. If they clear the monsters, the battle ends and the tile can be removed. Some other game effects to note. Light. As the illumination of the dungeon changes based on game effects, different penalties may apply, including high crit chances, additional stress, and even bonus dodge and accuracy for the monsters. If a hero hits zero life, they enter a state known as at death's door. They no longer take wounds and instead roll the at death's door die for each wound they now take. Any skulls rolled mean the hero dies. If a hero can be healed by even just one life point, they are no longer at death's door. XP can be gained by completing quests, adding them to the stagecoach counter. Heroes can visit the guild in the hamlet to use these points and buy new skills. Many other rules and effects are included in the rulebook, including boss monster encounters, advancing the campaign, visiting the hamlet to heal up and recover stress, an index of all the fun diseases and quirks, and more. If the party can defeat the final boss in Act 4, The Darkest Dungeon, also known as Hell is in the Heart, they cleanse the land and win the game. And that's the basics of Darkest Dungeon. I'm Becca Scott, and torches really save on the electricity bills. However, my cough has never been worse. Anyway, you can learn how to play this and other awesome games on how to play right here on Nerdist.